Hello and welcome to a new video about measurement. We want to measure flow. This time I want to talk about the flow type flow measurement. All of you, or at least a big part of you already have seen those type of flow measurement. At least if you have ever seen uh, in television a series or a, a movie about a, a hospital where they put an oxygen mask on and so on and then you see those those uh, float meters going up. Yeah? This is a float type flow meter. I'll show you how this looks like. It consists of a usually look through uh, of a transparent piece of tube. However, this is not cylindrical. It's usually a cone, slight cone. So we have here a slight cone. I will draw it now a little bit extreme yeah, that we notice this is a cone yeah? and we have a scale here on one side and in there we have some floater yeah? float object yeah? here we have it usually looking something like that yeah, here tuck. and whenever there is fluid usually gases or whatever streaming in here yeah, this will be lifted yeah? this will be lifted because it will go up yeah, because simply there is pressure coming and until this gap here is big enough that this current volume flow of, of, of fluid can pass this floater yeah. so this is a floater floater will be lifted by fluid and here on the side, I can, the fluid will then go on wherever it is needed. Okay? So it will simply pass through and will lift this floating element to a certain height. And if I can read the height at the scale, I know how much of this fluid is passing by. That's it. Yeah? This is float type measurement. So, benefit, of course, it's easy to build, cheap. Yeah? What else? I need no external power supply. No external power supply at all. Yeah? I do have an indication, a local indication without power. Perfect, yeah? Small flows. Can be detected. Even smallest flows can be detected. Yeah, and well, the repeat accuracy, yeah, repeated accuracy. Is high. Yeah. Accuracy, by the way, total accuracy is around uh, accuracy. Zero to three to two percent. Which is zero to three is really high two percent okay yeah. Re the repeated accuracy is very high. Why I say a repeated accuracy? Because that's already the downside. It needs to be calibrated for the fluid. Yeah. Needs to be calibrated for a certain type of fluid. Needs to be calibrated. If the fluid has a different property, like a different pressure, different different 
density or something like this, we have to adapt the scale. We have to calculate from the scale to another scale. Yeah, so we have to to scale the scale. <laughs> we have to scale the scale. So this needs to be calibrated. Then the total accuracy is fine. Yeah. However, the repeated accuracy is always high. Yeah. So even if the fluid is off from the specification, from the calibrated specification, then the repeated accuracy is quite high because it's always reacting the same way. Yeah? And since it's lifted and the other side is the force, yeah, it can only be only used, only use vertical. Or at least the force has some um, the, 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 the gravity has some influence on the measurement. Yeah? This can be limited influence can be limited with the help of a spring. Right? So I will draw this in here which color I'm using, this uh, spring. This must not be there, so that we have here a spring load which is holding this in place. Then the dependency on the built-in direction is not that high. Almost gone. So this is flow type flow measurement. All right. Next time another float measurement, a float flow measurement, of course, another flow measurement. I don't need to, to measure if something is floating. I see if it's floating. <laughs> flow measurement, inductive float, float, inductive flow measurement. Next video, inductive flow measurement. Yeah. Now, thank you for listening. Before I start to talk another nonsense. Yeah. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.